and, and a question that I was asking a little bit uh, um, uh, earlier, uh, or not that, that I'd asked a little bit earlier, uh, but had thought about a little bit earlier. Um, you have said that, um, or, or at least you, you said you'd consider uh, legalizing drugs in, in Texas, and I'd, I'd like for you just to expound on that for the audience tonight. I have said that that is a power that ought to be reserved to the people in the state, not something that the federal government ought to be doing. We have certainly seen, uh, both at the federal level and at the state level, a tremendous amount of resources poured into a drug war with little effect. Um, I had the opportunity to ride with a Dallas City police officer 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. He said 95 percent of what he does is drug-related crime. We are spending a tremendous amount of resources, frankly, that we don't have in a way that's ineffective. We've got to get beyond this uh, emotional debate and look at objective outcomes and results. Texas has got to be courageous enough to have this discussion and under a Deborah Medina governorship we will. When you smoke marijuana at a young age it'll usually lead to alcohol abuse and harder drugs. So right there I mean that's one reason why uh, it should not be legalized. We've heard that for years that it's a gateway drug. What do you say to that Congressman Paul? Well, I think that's silly. Probably the most addicted drug in the country and in the world is nicotine. And uh, nobody talks about nicotine being a gateway drug. So there's no sense to that. And besides, it's not nearly as addictive as alcohol. So if, if you're a consistent person and you think the government should be regulating personal behavior, you have to be for prohibition of alcohol. And when you look back and throughout history and what happened to that, that was a total disaster. It created the Al Capones. And right now today, there's so much violence today, not because people use drugs, but because they're illegal. That's why, you know the people who benefit the most by all these laws? These are the drug cartels. They lobby to keep these laws in place because they can't exist without them. They're, you don't have the alcohol pones now because you don't have prohibition of alcohol. Prohibition is what is bad. I think we're getting carried away with the whole war on drugs. That's how, how silly the whole thing gets. Drugs are very dangerous, but uh, there's a lot of things that's very dangerous. The question is, is, who should regulate danger? Should we assume responsibility for ourselves, or should the government take care of us? And I don't believe in the nanny state. If you do have regulations and laws, they should be at the state level, not at the federal level. We didn't even have a federal law up until 1937, and here we are. We have spent hundreds of billions of dollars in a very unsuccessful attempt to regulate drugs, and you have all these weird examples. Mm -hmm. That's one example you mentioned but what about a, a sick person dying with cancer goes out and uses marijuana with when it was legalized in a particular state like california and the feds come in and arrest them i mean there's so much violation yes. there of common decency and the constitution and it makes no sense the drug war is a total failure and the federal drug war ought to be re revisited and for the most part gotten rid of the Tenth Amendment says those powers not delegated to the United States government are reserved to the people in the state. So it is up to the Texas legislature and to the people of this state. funny thing about freedom is it marches hand in hand with prosperity.